Hi everyone, Ben Jones here with the Data Literacy Video Channel with another tool tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about the new data table interactive functionality that was launched recently in OpenAI's ChatGPT. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so here we are in ChatGPT 4.0 using a ChatGPT Plus subscription. And we're going to test out the new data table functionality that became available back in May 2024, so pretty recently. To test it out, I'm going to use this earthquake data from the U.S. Geological Survey. You can see it's magnitude 6 and above ever since 1900, January 1st. I'll search for that data, and you can see it's here in the USGS website. But we can download this data, which I've done, and I actually added it to my Google Drive account here. And so we're going to go ahead and connect to that data table here. So I'll click to the paper clip icon. I've already connected my Google Drive account to my ChatGPT Plus account. And here it is. So I'll select that data table. Now ChatGPT is going to actually include that table into this chat session right here. And we can see that we can start interacting with it in some pretty good ways. First of all, what it does is it gives us an overview of what it thinks based on its LLM functionality, these different column header names mean and what the different variables associated with those columns mean. And it's important to note here that, you know, ChatGPT doesn't necessarily know exactly what it is. This is not from some data catalog or some data dictionary. It's its, its own assessments based on its training about what these columns mean. It might be right, it might be wrong. And so we can simply start off with some questions that allow us to learn about earthquakes that have been recorded over time. So how many total earthquakes? Okay, so it's going to do something simple, basically give us the total number of records. And so it gives us a count of 14,000, okay? And we can probably verify that for ourselves if we wanted to. We could take a look at the table itself, you know, and if we go down to the bottom, we see that we're dealing with 14,000. And 16 rows or records in this little spreadsheet right here. Um, so, but we can do more than that, right? Let's say um, just show me earthquakes since January 1, 2000. So, it's basically a filter action. It's going to go ahead and take a look at the table and basically we'll see what it does. It's going to write Python, is what it's going to do. And it's going to give us the first few records since January 2021, starting off with the most recent ones here that have occurred as I'm recording this video, you know, within the last week or so. We can take a look, if we view its analysis, what it actually did. It's actually doing a conversion to turn time into a date time format, and then it's filtering for everything greater than a certain date there. Okay, and then it's displaying the first few rows of that table. And why don't we ask it to do something interesting? Say, uh, can you give me a summary of years, the number of earthquakes, and the average magnitude and depth for each year? If we wanted to summarize a table, we could do that. You know, uh, it will, this isn't incredibly meaningful. The average magnitude isn't maybe something we would find as a meaningful analysis with an earthquake uh, data set. But in any case, we can see that it will do that for us, you know, and we can actually expand it to go into the table and see since 2000, the number of earthquakes for each of these years, the average magnitude, the average depth. And even expanding the table still keeps the chat on the right. Um, and so we can see again, if we look into the analysis, what it's doing here, okay? This is a summary table. We're aggregating variables. You can call this a pivot table, uh, is what you would probably use in Excel if you were to try to create this on your own. So that's useful. Um, but this is where I guess we can go beyond that. So what if we ask it to say, can you find me the row associated with the deadliest earthquake in US history. Now what's interesting about this query is fatalities is not included in this data table anywhere, but it knows from its training, or I guess I should say it's learned from its training, that the deadliest earthquake in US history is usually considered to be the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, okay? And 
it says since it only includes earthquakes with a magnitude of 60 and above, we can search for one in that region in the early 20th century. And it looks like it's found it here, you know. So this is the one that it's looking for right here. It's uh, April 18th, 1906. We can see it's a magnitude 7.9 earthquake. And if we go to the right, we can see that it's the 1906 San Francisco, California earthquake. So it's able to return some rows. Um, what it's, I remember one when I was young, what about the Northridge earthquake? That's one I remember in California where I grew up in the Los Angeles area. Um, can you give me... Now this would be, again, you know, a little bit more difficult maybe. I mean, it's converting my natural language question into essentially uh, search parameters through the table. And so what it's doing is coming up with what those search parameters would be uh, based on my query here, based on my question. And that is indeed when it was, 1994, January 17th. I remember that day real well, waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning um, to uh, this magnitude 6.7 earthquake, right? So it's able to find individual records or rows that meet some kind of description that may or may not be obvious from the columns themselves. Why? Because it's able to go get context outside of the table and try to apply it to what I'm asking it to do. What about this? What if I say, can you create a, an interactive map of earthquakes since 1900? Let's see what it's going to do here, right? So I'm going to ask it to actually make that map for me. Let's collapse the table here. By the way, we can always download the table if we wanted to see the summary data. It's a new version of the table. Uh, but for now, let's just see what it will give me if I ask it to make a map for me, right? So now, we're again, we're going beyond just simple interact interactivity with the, the table itself, pivoting, summarizing. And we're going to actually go ahead and use this map. Now, it says that I need to download it. Okay, so let's click on download file. It's going to download that file. And then we're going to open it up, earthquakes underscore map dot HTML. And so this is, again, coming from the table. You know, I can see right away that I can maybe, you know, zoom in to some different areas. Let's pick this area here. Let's go into Los Angeles. We can come over here to where I grew up. Um, and we can see probably here is the Northridge earthquake, 1994. There it is. So we can make this actual interactive map, you know, based on the data itself. So that's pretty remarkable. It would probably take a lot of coding perhaps to know how to go from a spreadsheet like the one we've been using to an interactive map like this. But the LLM, you know, just kind of allows us to do that right here. So yeah, what I find remarkable about this, you know, is, uh, well, this allows everyone really that has an interest to be able to interrogate and, and explore uh, raw data tables and spreadsheets directly here in the, uh, in the chat bot, uh, which I think has a lot of promise. Of course, we need to be very careful. We need to take a look closely at all of these um, Python scripts that are being written in order to see exactly how it's converting our uh, prompts into a Python code to be able to interact with the tables. But nevertheless, I think it, it is a, a pretty um, impressive new addition to this, uh, to this tool. So with that, I hope you find a lot of good use out of this. Um, you know, again, we've got more content coming about uh, AI, about generative AI and ChatGPT specifically. Uh, but again, I'm gonna focus uh, mostly here in the YouTube channel on the interactivity between uh, these new tools and analytics. You know, our ability to actually uh, analyze data using these new LLM tools. I think very powerful, hold a lot of potential, also very problematic in a lot of ways. We didn't uncover any errors or issues here necessarily. Maybe we can look more closely at each of the steps and verify each one of these numbers in here to make sure it did the math right um, and make sure it's uh, code uh, operated as intended. But, uh, but again, you know, there's a lot of potential here. I think it's a powerful new functionality and hopefully you enjoy this little video. Uh, good luck trying it out. Let me know if you have any questions and we'll try to get to that here coming up soon. Okay, take care everyone. Bye now.